we're getting closer to the catch. SpaceX is intensifying tests on the catching system with B-14.1 and the Mechazilla arm in preparation for Flight 5's catching mission. Meanwhile, nearby, the crane system has undergone testing and is set for integration into the new full-stack tower process. The highlight of the day, NASA has assigned SpaceX the critical mission of deorbiting the ISS. In another development, after careful deliberation, a contractor has withdrawn from NASA's spacesuit contract. Without wasting any more time, let's dive right in. On June 21st, B-14.1 was moved from the Massey test site to the launch pad. The next morning, it was lifted by crane to the orbital launch mount. This step allowed SpaceX to address two issues. After B-14.1 was placed on the OLM, it could be connected to OLM hardware, like Booster Quick Disconnect, or the QD, to test the stiffness of the fuel tank under pressure. This is crucial for ensuring the hardware holds up when caught by the chopstick. Speaking of chopstick, it's been busy since B-14.1 was lifted to the OLM. On June 25th, the chopstick performed numerous operations, including raising, lowering, rotating, closing, opening, and raising landing rails using either one arm or both. By the end of the afternoon, the chopstick had grabbed B-14.1 and continued these operations. On the 26th, the chopstick maintained its relentless pace continually closing, opening, and repeating these actions. SpaceX is highly focused on chopsticks capabilities. Previously, simulations of the Starship catching process showed everything running smoothly. However, in reality, chopstick had yet to achieve this level of performance. Its significant mass and the need for high-speed movement combined with catching stages while their engines are still active make it prone to swaying and potential failures in the catching process. To address this, continuous testing is essential to refine chopsticks' speed and accuracy. The testing process has already yielded positive results, with chopsticks opening and closing speed clocking in at about 5 seconds. Using B14.1, SpaceX can safely conduct these operations without the risk associated with a complete booster. But I'm eagerly awaiting SpaceX to use a crane to lift B14.1 and drop it down to be caught by the chopstick. This test will reveal the true effectiveness or issues of the method, allowing for for necessary adjustments, SpaceX has another scheduled road closure on June 27th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to proceed with this. Hopefully, we'll see this test soon. If you're excited too, comment yes in the comment section, and don't forget to like the video, share it, and subscribe to the channel in order to support our team and stay updated on SpaceX's progress. Leaving the launch pad, we move over to the OLIT-2 where preparations for the second launch tower construction are underway. Recently, the crane designated for stacking the launch tower CC8800-1, or T-Rex, has undergone numerous tests. On June 24th, with the assistance of another crane, it underwent a twisted test. On the 25th, it was pulled and lifted. Watching this test, I felt like I was witnessing an awakened monster with its vibrant orange paint make it even more striking. So impressive. It was then erected and kept upright until June 26th when it was taken down. Thus, the equipment supporting the launch tower stack is ready. The tower foundation is nearly complete, and now we await the arrival of the tower segments for stacking. Currently, SpaceX has seven segments at the Sanchez site. With the crane's system's recent progress, these segments may be transported soon. The other two segments and chopstick appear to have gone to Texas. SpaceX has scheduled road closures from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. on June 26th, the 27th, and the 28th to transport the tower module from the port of Brownsville to the Sanchez lot next to Remedios Road. We're really close to having all the segments gathered at Starbase. SpaceX might be waiting for these two segments to arrive before moving them all at once to the launch site for stacking. That's right, people. The Two Towers chapter is almost here. But wait, there's more. More good news, that is and they keep coming. SpaceX has received another honor from NASA related to the ISS. NASA awarded SpaceX an $843 million contract to build the United States Deorbit Vehicle, or USDV. 
This vehicle will be used to deorbit the International Space Station. If you weren't excited before, then you should be now. And to show it, remember, like the video, share it, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated and show your support to the team. Ken Bowersox, NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations, stated, selecting a USD orbit vehicle for the International Space Station will help NASA and its international partners ensure a safe and responsible transition in low Earth orbit at the end of station operation. Currently, NASA has not disclosed any details or illustrations of SpaceX's USDV design. However, many expect it to be based on the Dragon vehicle, which currently supports the ISS with goods and crew transportation. Previously, NASA mentioned it'll be a new spacecraft design or a modification of an existing spacecraft that must function on its first flight and have sufficient redundancy and anomaly recovery capability to ensure a successful deorbit burn. Initially, NASA estimated the contract value to be over a billion dollars. However, thanks to SpaceX's reliable and affordable reusable vehicles, the cost was reduced to $843 million. This demonstrates SpaceX's critical role in the U.S. aerospace industry and its superiority over competitors. Regarding the deorbit plan, NASA has published a detailed analysis summary. Firstly, they outlined the why of deorbiting and how it's necessary, meanwhile highlighting the potential of each component. The most notable part of the plan is the methods that can be used. NASA emphasized the primary method. NASA has concluded that deorbiting the International Space Station using a US-developed deorbit vehicle with a final target in a remote part of the ocean is the best option for the station's end of life. After 30 years of operation, the ISS will be returning home. With this method, SpaceX's USDV could push or pull the ISS out of orbit, ensuring a re-entry and splashdown in the ocean. Even before it happens, I can already imagine how impressive that scene will be, a beautiful ending for the largest human-made structure in space. Of course, to arrive at this conclusion, NASA considered and evaluated many other backup solutions. Their plan outlines eight additional methods, each with detailed explanations. Uncontrolled re-entry, disassemble and return to Earth, disassemble and repurpose in low Earth orbit, disassemble and deorbit in smaller pieces, boost to a higher orbit, decomposition or fragmentation of the space station while in space, transition the space station to a commercial operator, or continue international space station operations beyond 2030. Regardless of the method chosen, the role of SpaceX and its USDV will be crucial. However, I hope the main method will be applied. How about you? Which method do you think is the best? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But of course, the deorbit plan still has many challenges, including considering moves from Russia, which has the majority of modules on the ISS. Given the current relationship, it's hard to predict what decisions Putin will make. Nevertheless, let's pay tribute to the ISS for its many contributions to the aerospace industry. The end will mark the beginning of a new era. New space stations with advanced technologies will help humans explore space more effectively. However, the ISS will always remain a monumental symbol in the history of space exploration. Thank you so much, ISS. Now, let's mosey on over to another update related to NASA's spacesuit system. As NASA grapples with more spacesuit problems on the International Space Station, the company it selected to develop replacement suits has announced it is pulling back from that effort. That company is Collins Aerospace, one of two companies along with Axiom Space that NASA awarded a contract to design spacesuits two years ago to create spacesuits two years ago. NASA stated no further work will be performed on the task orders. This action was agreed upon after Collins recognized its development timeline would not support the space station's schedule and NASA's mission objectives. While Axiom spacesuits have appeared and are used by NASA on the ISS, and spacesuits for the Artemis mission have also been tested, Collins Aerospace's progress has been too slow. This is unfortunate because NASA recently faced continuous problems with spacesuits causing two spacewalk missions to be postponed. This highlights the consequences of NASA's contractor selection. However, this setback gives NASA the opportunity to consider other options. I believe they should give SpaceX's EVA suit a chance, which recently showcased many outstanding features. 
Let's see how NASA will decide to provide astronauts with the best gear for more effective space exploration in the future. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.